ते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैस्ति श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंथो टेन चैप्टर फोर्टीन टाइटल्ड ब्रह्मास प्रेयर्स टू लॉर्ड कृष्णा टेक्स्ट नंबर फोर्टी टू अनुज्ञाप्य भगवान स्वभुव प्राक अवस्थिता वत्सान पुलिना आनिन्ये यता पूर्वा सकाम स्वकम तथो नुज्ञाप्य भगवान् स्वभुव प्रागवस्थिता वत्सन पुलिनमानिन्ये यता पूर्व सकम स्वकम तथो नुज्ञाप्य भगवान् स्वभुव प्रागवस्थिता वत्सान पुलिनमानिन्ये यता पूर्व सकम स्वकम तथो नुज्ञाप्य भगवान् स्वभुव प्रागवस्थिता वत्सान पुलिन मानिन्ये यता पूर्व सकम स्वकम तानुज्ञाप्य भगवान पुलिन मानिन्ये तथा देन अजुनाप्य giving permission bhagavan the supreme lord swabhuvam to his own son 
Brahma. Prag from before. Avasthitan situated. Vatsan the calves. Pulinam to the shore of the river. Aninye he brought. Yatha Purva just as before. Sakam where the friends were present. Svakam his own. Translation and purport by disciples of Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> After granting his son Brahma permission to leave, the Supreme Personality of Godhead took the cows who were still where they had been a year earlier and brought them to the river bank where he had been taking his meal and where his covered boyfriends remained just as before. Purport. The word Swabhuam to his own son indicates that Lord Krishna forgave the offense Brahma had committed and treated him with affection as his son. It is stated in this verse that the original cowherd boyfriends and calves were situated just as before near the bank of the Yamuna river and in the forest respectively. Previously the cows had disappeared within the forest and Lord Krishna had gone to search for them. Not finding them, the Lord had returned to the river bank to discuss the situation with his covered boyfriends. But they had also disappeared. Now the cows were once again in the forest and the boyfriends once again on the bank of the river, ready to take their lunch. According to Srila Sanatana Goswami, the cows and boys remained in the forest and on the river bank respectively for one full year. Lord Brahma did not actually take them away to another place. By the Lord's omnipotent illusory energy, the gopis and other residents of Rindavan did not notice the cows and boys, nor did the cows and boys notice the passing of a year time or feel any hunger, cold or thirst. All this was part of the pastime arranged by the Lord's illusory potency. Lord Brahma taught, I have kept all the boys and cows of Gokula sleeping on the bed of my mystic potency. And to this very day they have not risen. A similar number of boys and cows have been playing with Krishna for one whole year. Yet they are different from the ones illusioned by my mystic potency. Who are they? Where did they come from? Nothing is invisible to the Supreme Lord. Thus Lord Krishna appeared to be searching for the cows and boys only to enact the dramatic pastime of bewildering Lord Brahma. After Brahma surrendered and offered prayers, Lord Krishna returned to the original boys and cows who appeared exactly as before although their size had somewhat increased because of one year's growth. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, since Lord Krishna was playing exactly like an innocent young coward boy in Vrindavan, after four-headed Brahma offered his prayers, the Lord maintained his role as a young coward boy and thus remained silent before Brahma. Krishna's silence indicates the following thoughts. Where did this four-headed Brahma come from? What is he doing? What are these words he keeps on speaking? I am busy looking for my cows. I am just a coward boy and do not understand all this. Lord Brahma had considered Lord Krishna an ordinary coward boy and had treated him as such. After accepting Brahma's prayers, Krishna continued to play as a coward boy and thus did not answer the four-headed Brahma. Rather, Krishna was more interested in rejoining his coward boyfriends 
for the picnic lunch on the bank of the Yamuna River. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalitha Shri Vishakan Vitamsha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamine Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasyatya Deshatarine Vansha Kalpatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Evacha Paditanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gauratvise Namaha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare Hare After granting his son Brahma permission to leave, the Supreme Personality of Godhead took the cows who were still where they had been a year earlier and brought them to the river bank. For he had been taking his meal and where his covered boyfriends remained just as before. Hare Krishna. So in this chapter titled Brahma's Prayers to Lord Krishna, we have been hearing about this amazing pastime of how Krishna, acting like an ordinary covered boy, bewildered Brahma. Brahma wanted to analyze the greatness that is God. And he was totally bewildered what he saw, that here he is, accepting himself as how foolish and arrogant he was and offering, he is surrendering and he is about to leave. Why he is about to leave? Because he thinks that, what is my position? I am not qualified to remain here in Vrindavan. I should be going back to my service as a creator of the universe. He felt this when Krishna just ignored and he was just silent. And in that silence, he could understand that Krishna was telling him, as there is a saying in English, work now, samadhi later. So Brahma was told, now you go back. Uh, Not only that, Brahma also realized that, you know, uh, what is the mood, uh, the covered boy's love, and what he was thinking, what was his state. So it was a very 
humiliating or maybe you're very, uh, it has humbled him so much that he had a better realization of Krishna, which was not there before. So it is not the proximity that can give us an opportunity to achieve or attain. It is service or pleasure. There is one thing uh, during Prabhupada's Leela's, Prabhupada was sitting one time in his room. There are many of his disciples, some Krastas, and uh, Someone said, Prabhupada, we would like to be always with you. We would like to be very close to you. So many of them should travel wherever Prabhupada is to go. We want to be very close to Prabhupada. So Prabhupada asked them, do you know that who is very close to me in this room now? So everyone started thinking, who it must be so very close, just looking at each other. Maybe he is close to you. Who is Prabhupada saying about? Prabhupada said, this fly, you can see this fly? This fly on my body is very close to me. But actually this fly is a nuisance to me. So the message was, it is not the proximity. So similarly, Brahma also, he realized that it is not, I am not worth living here in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is not meant for everyone. Of course, we like to go to Vrindavan. We run to Vrindavan. But Vrindavan is a very, very high state of consciousness which the Lord also enacted. So he was silenced for some time. So in that book, Qualities of Vaishnavas, there is one quality, a devotee is very silent. It is very nice to be silent because our tongue is very difficult to control. We keep talking. It is said that you can tell someone to fast for the whole day. But to tell someone, keep quiet for half an hour. It's very difficult. Uncontrolled, very difficult. So Satsup Maharaj says once, uh, he asked Prabhupada that what does it mean? In Bhagavatam it is, some past time he said that during the autumn, the rivers, they flow down and then they are silent for some time. So Prabhupada said in another context that it is, he is not obliged to speak always. So he is silent. But silence has many other aspects. A pure devotee may be silent because of some ecstatic feelings within his heart and he is choked up so he can't speak. That is also silence. But he's also silence, silent because he's not necessary that he has to say that one devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, can you tell us about your feelings of separation with your Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur? Prabhupada was very silent. He said it is not necessary. So that is also silence. But Prabhupada, once he said, at night when you go to rest, you should recapitulate the whole day. What did you speak the whole day? Uh, where were we spoke nonsense, which you could have avoided. Before you go to take rest, you should ask. This is Prabhupada's instruction. So silence, yes, it is uh, uh, said that a foolish person is goes undetected till he opens his mouth. So if, if, it, if there is something beneficial to speak for others, if I, what I speak, if it is going to help this person, if it is not, then better don't seek anything. But the tongue, very difficult to control, so it's a big tapasya, not to speak. But also why we speak is, it's also out of false ego, because there is a superiority feeling that I have something very valuable to speak. I want attention of everyone. Please listen. Then you want to speak. It's some type of, you know, I have something, I am different, I am. So anyway, uh, this is how, of course, here the Lord wanted to just show that Brahma, you know, 
okay, you know, fine, you are, I know you, who you are. But I, for me, you know, there are my coward boys, you know. So it's said in the purport that when Brahma was speaking like this, the Lord was acting like a perfect, you know, coward boy. The Lord, when He descends, when He takes the form, whatever form He takes, He does the best. Uh, if He has a child, then the best. Coward boy, best. Uh, if He is acting as a, you know, husband, the best. If as a lover, best. As a child, so He is acting as a coward boy. So He is just looking here and there. And uh, for Him, what is this? All this admiration and, you know, reverence, you know, he's talking about all this. I don't know what is he chanting, some mantras, you know, four-headed Brahma. Where are my coward boys? He's looking here and there. So the point Lord is uh, bringing out is how much great the residents of Vrindavan were, you know. Their love was so supreme that the Lord didn't find anything more important than that. So for our understanding, this is the difference that uh, even Maharani Krunti also had love for she was staying outside Vrindavan and Yashoda had love for Krishna, she was in Vrindavan but there was a difference. Uh, Kunti Maharani could never forget the greatness of Krishna. She knew how great he is. But she was getting bewildered how these Vrindavan residents are, you know, how are they, you know, they can't see Krishna as, they don't know that he is supreme, she is chastising him and the Lord is becoming fearful. This is her trying to analyze the greatness. And the Vrindavan residents, even when they are told that you know that Krishna is, he did like this, so they would say, maybe, maybe he may be a demigod. It's again, maybe, uh, it's not that he is, maybe. For them, he is just a wonderful boy and they all loved him. So for understanding, the Lord has uh, Bahiranga Shakti, external energy, and there is an Antaranga Shakti and we are Tatastha Shakti. Now Bahiranga Shakti is so inconceivable. Huh? All our intelligence we try to analyze, it's impossible to find out. Then what do we know? What should you know? It's impossible. There are so much knowledge, you know. People are studying, like once Prabhupada was said about, uh, what is this, you know, material knowledge? Huh? So on the subject of geography, he said, yes, you should know geography. You should know geography that whichever part of the world you are in, you should know how to reach Vandavan. That is geography. <laughs> Once Jayadit Maharaj was sitting here, he's, the same question came about, you know, material knowledge. How much should we know? How much should we balance? Of course, it is important. He said, you should know what time the train leaves and what time it reaches Mathura. That is also knowledge, but you should know that. Of course, material knowledge is there when it is used. But the point is, it is inconceivable. That is why Brahma himself in his uh, prayers, he is saying, Pantastu koti sata vatsara sampragambhyo Vayo ratapi manaso munipungavana So pyasi yat prapadasimnya avichintya tatve Govindam adi purusham tam aham bhajami now, when you look out into the space, my God, there is so much debate going on about you know, the moon, the stars. Huh? Moon is one of the stars. And there is so much. People are trying. The scientists are trying very hard. And they find something, but then there is not beneficial to anyone. Then they start speculating. So here, Brahma is saying, in this universe... If you travel at the speed of wind, forget about wind, you travel at the speed of mind. Suppose there is a spacecraft and you travel at the speed of mind. You know what is the speed of mind? Uh, within seconds, uh, you just... Even if you travel at the speed of mind in a spacecraft, 
for millions of years. Now try to think. Still you will not be able to figure out what is the nature of this universe. Inconceivable. Now this is Bahiranga Shakti. Just imagine, just Bahiranga. It's external, inferior energy. Now here, the Lord, what He showed Brahma was Antaranga Shakti. Now imagine how inconceivable will be Antaranga Shakti. Yeah, you just, just see the pastime, what is said here. Uh, Brahma wanted to analyze the greatness, you know, staying away. And the Lord, amazing, huh? this is amazing. The more you hear, now the few weeks back when we had a question that what happened to those coward boys, you know. Brahma stole them, but they were there. But we were asking, what happened? Actually, they were there itself, but they were invisible too. The cows were also there, the coward boys also there, exactly the same place. Now see the potency. One year passed, but they didn't know that. But they were there for one year. And they didn't feel any thirst, no hunger. Only their body became little big. <laughs> That's what said in the purport. Because one year had passed. But they didn't notice that. And Lord, in that one year, everything happened. He then showed them again Agasur. So that they can go back and tell that this just happened, you know, this just happened. You know, there was a question that why it took one year for them to tell. So this is the reason. And Brahma taught that he has taken away the coward boys and cows. Actually, he had not taken them. You can't touch Krishna's eternal associates. Brahma can't touch with this, you know, whatever mystic potency, power he had. He, still it was material, so he could not touch them. So what he felt he touched, it was again Krishna's illusory Potency acting on Brahma. Brahma felt that he has taken them away. And he has kept them inside the cave. And they are still there. And Brahma comes back and he sees the same set of people are there. He is amazed. And then the Lord reveals to him that it's me. Then he realizes the greatness of the Lord. He offers obeisances. And when he offers his obeisances, the Lord has again come back to his position of a covered boy. All the greatness is gone. That means his Antaranga Shakti himself is now. That means the Lord forgot about his greatness. The Lord showed all this. So he has to forget about his own greatness to act like that. That means there is something acting on himself. So that is Antaranga Shakti. The Antaranga Shakti himself is acting over the Lord. And the Lord, it's not that it's just acting. He really, he really believes that. He feels it. That he is just a coward boy and they are his friends and they are willing to do anything for him. So their love which is beyond all this reverence and admiration is what makes Krishna. So Krishna is just looking out for them you know, here and there and Brahma is offering prayers and going away. So this is the amazing uh, pastime. So what does it mean to us? Huh? It is not something concocted or some fiction, uh, some uh, something, you know, just uh, kalpanic talk. It's a fact. What is happening is a fact and everyone has an opportunity to experience this and also be part of this Leela. It is not that this is only for them or it is whether it exists or not. So the degree a person becomes very pure in his consciousness, to that degree he will be able to understand. So Prabhupada in his own life also was in Vrindavan. He was in Vrindavan once. So Prabhupada also had to leave Vrindavan, not like Brahma of course. Prabhupada left because his instructions from his Guru Maharaj was very much there in his heart. So he left out of compassion and his instruction what he had received and he traveled and he established, isn't it amazing what Prabhupada did when he did, if you, the more we hear about, more we speak about, the more we start thinking, who was Prabhupada? You know? 
So exactly, even Prabhupada, what activities, it is all Antaranga Shakti. This is not possible by the influence of any Bhairanga Shakti. Antaranga Shakti, huh? such amazing things happening. Every time we hear something which is beyond our, you know, understanding. How can it be possible? How we did that? Uh, what state of people were in, what consciousness and to give them, raise them to a level where they can uh, start understanding the Lord's pastimes. So it is said that one Prabhupada disciple was saying that how Prabhupada even after he had established his con was established all over the world and one time this uh, disciple in Vrindavan, he was staying in Pugla Ashram. He was saying this about his experience. So he was not getting sleep at night. So he said, let me go. So he came out for a walk. So he traveled all the way to Vrindavan and he saw that everyone was sleeping. Even the security guy was sleeping. Uh, so he went, everyone is sleeping, everyone sleeping. But there was one light somewhere silence and he went very close and he saw Prabhupada in his dictaphone he was still so he was wondering why where is the need now you already established is gone you are well known you have fulfilled your Guru Maharaj's instruction so but Prabhupada in that state still he was very old that time his health was also not good so determined to see that he can give us to the world this knowledge. So I think this is up to which 11th chapter? No, Prabhupada came up to 11th chapter? 13th chapter. So this is 13th chapter Prabhupada was translating. So well, that one sense it was very amazing what Prabhupada did. But same time, relating to past times of Krishna, that how Krishna was so much attracted to the coward boy's love rather than in all the admiration. So when his disciples out of love for him, they decided to make a palace of gold. Now this is something unheard of, you know, anyone making a monument for their spiritual master and that to quote, palace of gold. So Prabhupada one time in Rindavan he was walking with his disciples and the palace of gold was not just some, you know, the plinth work and some construction, concrete, steel, uh, stones, marbles, they were all lying here and there. So one of the disciples asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, will this palace of gold for you will also be studded with jewels and pearls? Uh, the way we hear description in Bhagavatam, will they be illuminating on their own? There will not, there is no need for light. So this is what he was asking. Prabhupada became very grave and he said, my jewels, huh, my disciples are my jewels. So in spite of all these things, for in his heart, it is disciples were like his jewels. So much love. He said, each one of them, they are going to illuminate the whole world. This was his relationship so we can understand that how Prabhupada, uh, in spite of his uh, success and all in his heart, his relationship was with his disciples for their surrender, for their sacrifice. So they themselves were empowered and uh, they carried on Prabhupada's mission. So we in this state, of course, uh, uh, we also have opportunity, but we should know our position, that uh, how this love and uh, how what the resident said, uh, this cannot be imitated. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a tendency, we see sometimes, you know, even if there is no love, then there is a feeling of showing that, you know, we love, we talk, we behave. If you're not in that position, then that type of expression is something like a sergia. Sergia means, you know, Maharaj gives an example that if the mango is not ripe, you just beat the mango, make it soft, and they say that, see, now it's ripe. 
to become ripe, it takes time to become ripe and it is very sweet. So prematurely no one can imitate what uh, the love the residents or the devotees had for Krishna. So it is only through going through the proper channel. So this is the greatness of Prabhupada. So Prabhupada gave all of us, even though we are in this conditioned state, Prabhupada gave us this opportunity to purify our consciousness and experience. Well, there may not be any love, obviously, because so many desires uh, in our heart, so many millions of birds. Uh, as uh, Janani Vas Prabhu was once saying that, the problem is we have so many desires and also the sense objects are there around. <laughs> what to do, you know? Desires are there, sense objects are there. Uh, so a few days back, I think Shamanand Prabhu was giving a very nice... Uh, but what Prabhupada gave us, just following four regulative principles and chanting, it lifts us to the mode of goodness. So he, uh, he was saying very... Because in the, recently in the newspaper, this was such a big news. And every day it's in the paper. The six people gang raped this girl and you know, eventually she died. And how can it be possible? You know, how can it be so barbaric? But now we don't know that what type of desires are there in the heart but they are in a dormant state. But if they rise, how a person is going to behave? What he is going to do in that situation? It may be very bewildering now. But then the mode of goodness, following this, the sadhana, association, it is like a thermostat. A very nice analogy, the thermostat. You know what is thermostat? So even if that arises... So this mode of goodness will extinguish it. There is a chance. So Prabhupada did that. He demonstrated it all over the world by giving his love and simple principles of following Krishna consciousness, four regulative principles. Those who followed it, chanting, and then yeah, you are way above. And this goodness would, it will insulate us from the material miseries of this world, you know. Even though living in this world, it minimizes the effect because it acts like an insulin. So where is the question about love? Huh? I remember once I was traveling with Pralanand Maharaj. So he, he lifted his beads, bead bags like this. He lifted his beads. He said that, where is the question of love? If you are not even attentive. Love comes. If there is love, it is very natural that you will be able to attend to you. So the holy name is not different from Krishna. Krishna is present. Uh, where is the question of what love? If you are not even attentive. So if there is attentiveness is a sign of love. It begins with attentiveness and then there is a question. So this is a very profound statement. Very casually you made it. But uh, we remember that, where is Islam? So whatever position, it's a great uh, contribution of Srila Prabhupada to this world. Yeah, what state you are. Huh? So in the newspaper there is so many, uh, some uh, thinker, some uh, philosopher, some politician, some scientist. Is Someone said that we should chemical castration, surgical castration, punishment, of course, death to them. Then, uh, I think someone said about the dress code also, you know. This is what provokes. Uh, so many type of solutions, but all these solutions are, no one ever talks about because people don't know this, that it is within you uh, what type of modes of nature are acting on you. Is it passion, or ignorance? But one thing is sure that from the mode of goodness, a person doesn't slip down so easily to passion. But in the mode of passion, it's very easy to go down to ignorance. So no one has any knowledge about it. No one talks about it. This is Vedic knowledge. And this is what Prabhupada had this. And he wanted to uh, share this with everyone to make this place. Otherwise, these things are daily happening. I mean, what happened in Delhi? You think this is not happening daily? 
only thing this came up in the news uh, child abuse and exploitation and so many things a murder and not uh, children killing their parents is amazing how can it happen i will never do it like this you don't know so it is only lifting up your consciousness that is the real solution that's what prabhupada wanted no that is one of his he wanted i want what he said i want brahmanas right he wanted society of brahmanas they can lead they can influence others so this is greatness of prabhupada and we are all very fortunate to be here and uh, that's all i is there anything else i to take yes gaurang prabhu <laughs> so thank you very much shila prabhupad ki jai grantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai so uh, thank any comments yeah